Usually when one thinks about the history of America, most people don't think about the so-called black people in America. Usually when people do think about the so-called black people in America, they think back as far as slavery. And I'm here to change your mind. I will be proving how there were two separate groups of people in the Americas around the time of the last ice age. I will also prove how current Native Americans don't resemble the first Americans, nor do they match the descriptions of Americans from European travelers. We start off with this study from PubMed Central. Genetic studies have been consistent with the single common origin of Native American groups from Central and South America. However, some morphological studies have suggested a more complex picture, whereby the Northeast Asian affinities of present-day Native Americans contrast with a distinctive morphology seen in some of the earliest American skeletons, which share traits with present-day Australasians, which is indigenous groups in Australia, Melanesia, and Ireland, Southeast Asia. It then it goes on to say that Amazonian Native Americans partly descend from a Native American population that carry ancestry more closely related to indigenous Australians, New Guineans, and Andaman Islanders than to any present day Eurasian or Native American, which is further saying that current Native Americans do not resemble their so-called ancestors. This is an article from the National Geographic this will corroborate what we just read. The oldest complete skeleton of its kind ever found, dating to more than 12,000 years ago, is helping solve a mystery about the differences in body types between the first humans to arrive in the Americas and later Native Americans, scientists announced Thursday. We know we didn't arrive here. We've always been here, but we're going to keep going. Anthropologists have long puzzled over why Native Americans don't look more like their ancient ancestors who migrated into the Americas during the Pleistocene, the epoch that encompassed the last ice age and that ended about 12,000 years ago. And this article is from 2014. Anthropologists at this time were questioning why Native Americans don't look like their so-called ancestors. I will also be showing that they couldn't have migrated into the Americas about that time ago because they're there was an ice wall in the Yukon territory blocking passage, but we'll get to that. The ancient skulls are larger, their faces are narrower and more forward projecting, and they more closely resemble native peoples of Africa, Australia, and the Southern Pacific Rim than they do their supposed American descendants. They tell you right now, the first Americans resembled the native peoples of Africa and Australia in the Southern Pacific Rim more than they do the current day Native Americans, meaning they were so-called Negroid and not Mongoloid. The skeleton dubbed Naya by her discoverers belonged to a teenage girl who fell more than 100 feet to her death nearly a half mile inside an elaborate network of karst caves that were largely dry at the end of the Pleistocene. Divers who found Naya in a cave on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula named her watery grave Oyo Negro, which translates to black hole in Spanish. Chatters described Naya's face as narrow with wide set eyes and a low prominent forehead, a low flat nose and outward projecting teeth, about the opposite of what Native Americans look like today. Genetic analysis of modern Native Americans indicate they descend from a founding population that originated in Asia. They were isolated from other population groups for several thousand years, somewhere in or near the region known as Beringia, a broad swath of land that reached from Siberia to Alaska during the last glacial maximum. So that's telling you, when the ancestors of current day Native Americans did try to come over to the Americas, they were un unable to do so because the area known as Beringia was iced over, meaning their passage was being blocked. I have one more article that I want to show to corroborate the ice wall and the multiple populations in the Americas, and then I have a video that I want to show y'all. We on the Canadian Museum of History website. At the height of the last ice age, glacial ice covered nearly all of Canada and much of Europe and Asia. With much of the Earth's water locked up in ice, sea levels were lowered worldwide by 100 meters. 
This exposed shallow seabeds off the east coast of North America, as well as a land bridge between Alaska and Siberia in the heart of a region known as Beringia. Beringia remained free of ice because the climate was very dry. Archaeological evidence suggests that people had spread across Beringia from northeastern Asia into unglaciated portions of Alaska and the Yukon Territory sometime before 18,000 years ago. People may have also been living elsewhere in North America south of the glacial ice at this time, an issue that continues to be hotly debated by archaeologists today. So let's get this straight. The ancestors of current day Native Americans traveled from northeastern Asia to the Yukon Territory sometime about 18,000 years ago, which was covered in ice then, and they couldn't have made it into North America until about after 12,000 years ago. But then at that time, and before that time, people were living south of the glacial ice, but yet Native Americans still get called the descendants of the first Americans. Honestly, the math just not math. In the heart of the Brazilian wilderness lies a prehistoric rock shelter, decorated with thousands of strange paintings. South American archaeologists are finding unusual human remains. The skulls aren't European, but they aren't American Indian either. They belong to none of the prehistoric races known to have set foot in the New World. These skulls are as old as the Ice Age. So who were these first people to discover the Americas? And what became of them? Did they all disappear? Or did some of them survive? Indians, in fact, had been in America for thousands of years. Scientists today can tell precisely when they arrived and from where. All native peoples in South and North America belong to a racial type known as Mongoloid. They're descended from the ancient peoples of Siberia. During the Ice Age, 12,000 years ago, there was a land bridge between Siberia and Alaska. Mongoloid peoples were the first to enter the New World, or so experts thought. The Brazilian finds point to a very different story of the discovery of the Americas. paintings on these rock shelters are much older than the Indians. Here, hunters chase giant armadillos, an animal that flourished during the Ice Age, long before the arrival of the Indians. But if people had been here before the American Indians, surely there would be other traces of their presence. The archaeologists continued to dig down to depths 50,000 years old. And then they found this. Fragments of animal bone and charcoal. For Anne-Marie Passy, one of the archaeologists involved in the dig, these fragments were proof of human occupation. We found structures shaped like hearths. 
Next to the charcoal, depending on the period, we sometimes found food leftovers of animals they may have eaten. The Brazilian finds show that the New World was discovered tens of thousands of years earlier than previously believed, certainly well before the time of the American Indians. But who were these pioneers? A much earlier wave of mongoloids or another race altogether? Clues to the identity of the first Americans are emerging in rock shelters in the northeast and southeast of Brazil. Archaeologists there have recently unearthed human remains. Prehistoric skulls were found buried in layers of soil 9 to 12,000 years old. They are the oldest skulls in the Americas. And this is the oldest of them all. The skull of a young woman, nicknamed Luthia by scientists. Can she tell us who the first Americans were? Walter Nevis is a physical anthropologist at Sao Paulo University in Brazil. He has been using a standard and reliable archaeological measure, the shape of the skull, to find out what race she belonged to. He fully expected Luthia to be a Mongoloid, an ancestor of the American Indians. But then he fed the measurements into the computer. When we start running the computer and seeing the results, uh, it was amazing because we realized that uh, uh, the statistics, the quantitative analysis we were doing was not showing just people to be Mongoloid. In fact, the analysis was showing these people was anything except mongoloids. So who was Luthia? And where did she come from? To find out, the skull was taken to a hospital in Rio de Janeiro to begin the process of reconstructing her face. The first stage was to make a three-dimensional CAT scan of Luthia's skull in order to build a replica. was then given to Richard Neve of the University of Manchester in England, one of the world's leading forensic artists to recreate her features. To me, it's a Negroid face that has all the features that you associate with a Negroid face. The um, proportions of the face, it doesn't say anything about it being a Mongoloid. Was this then the face of a first American? Her reconstruction is confirmed by measurements Walter Nevis has taken of all his skulls. The first reaction uh, was not to believe in it, 
but as the results, you know, repeated, repeated, repeated so many times, and the result is exactly the same thing. They are very similar to nowadays aborigines and Africans, and no similarity at all with mongoloids in Asia or with American Indians. When I was reading to prepare for this interview, I was quite surprised to see you use the... Before I go into European descriptions on early American Indians, let's look at this article. A monthly record of anthropological science published under the direction of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain in Ireland. So they're not just spitballing. The recent paper in this journal by Buxton, Trevor, and Julian implies that an undeformed Negroid physical type inhabited the Virgin Islands in pre-Columbian time. Not only is this implication contrary to previously accepted findings for the Antillean area, but it also fails to give adequate consideration to the possibility of these skeletal remains representing intrusive Negro burials, which we know is false, according to Lucia and Naya. Also, why would the so-called intrusive Negro be buried Indian style, meaning in a, in a mound? Now let's look at sailors' narratives of voyages along the New England coast from 1524 to 1624, starting with Giovanni da Verrazzano, 1524 at Narragansett Bay. The complexion of these people is black, not much different from that of the Ethiopians. Their hair is black and thick and not very long. It is worn tied back upon the head in the form of a little tail, which we call a ponytail. Now honestly, be honest, is that how you would describe today's Native American? Now we own Bartholomew Gosnall from 1602 at Buzzards Bay. These people in color are inclined to a swart, tawny, or chestnut color, not by nature, but accidentally. Somebody, anybody, please explain to me how can you accidentally be swarthy or tawny, which means dark. Now we're in a voyage of discovery into the South Sea in Bering Straits. The physiognomy of these Indians is ugly, stupid, and savage. Otherwise, they are well-formed, tolerably tall, and of a dark brown complexion. The women are short and very ugly. They have much of the Negro in their countenance, only that a Negro head may be called handsome in comparison with theirs. They are principally distinguished from the Negroes by their very long, smooth, and cold black hair. They say they have much of the Negro in their countenance. Countenance means face or facial features or facial expressions, one of the three or probably all three, you can look it up yourself. Would you honestly describe today's Native Americans like that? No, you wouldn't. You would either call them Asiatic or Mongoloid looking. 